Welcome into another episode of Locked On Phillies. The Phillies took down the Toronto Blue Jays in the series ender of a short two-game set. Bryce Harper looks like he's finally heating up. The Phillies' playoff chances are looking better by the day. And we're also going to get into what should be the wild card rotation. I know it might be a little bit early, but it's never too early to start thinking about planning for October, especially when the Phillies are playing like they have been over the past couple months. So we'll get into all that on today's episode of Locked On Phillies. You are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I'm your host, Connor Thomas. Locked On Phillies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for checking us out, whether you're listening on the podcast form, you're watching on the YouTube. Either way, I appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you're rating and reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube, all that good stuff. You hear it all the time. It really does help me and you. It helps me. Uh, significantly because it lets more people see Locked On Phillies and YouTube reads that and uh, pumps out the episodes to more people. So you want to convert more Philadelphia fans to Locked On Phillies, right? But it also helps you in that it's very easy to do. It costs you no money, but you get notifications when episodes are posted and everything like that. It's your best way of following along for Locked On Phillies because it lets YouTube know that uh, you like this channel and you want to see more content from them. And uh, that just it's a symbiotic relationship that helps both of us out. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube, I would really appreciate it if you do. And it helps you out if you do as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Fandle Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit Fandle.com slash Locked On today to get started. That's Fandle.com slash Locked On. I'm just telling you to do it today. It's not all together. You get what I'm saying. Now, the Philadelphia Phillies had a rough stretch of offensive performance for the past couple games, right? They struggled in the uh, final two games against Minnesota at home, and then they struggled in game one against the Toronto Blue Jays up in Toronto. But guess what, folks? The offense well, busted out last night, and Bryce Harper was a huge part of that. If uh, you need a bit of a recap on what happened in the game, well, just imagine Bryce Harper hitting home runs to the center part of the field, and that's basically the big story of the game. Now, there was more that went into it and everything there, uh, when you look at the box score and the play-by-play -play and all that good stuff, uh, it shows that it was a back-and-forth game early, which is what you saw if you were watching. Uh, Jake Cave had a sacrifice fly early to put the Phillies up 1-0, but then Dalton Varsho hit a home run off Varon Nola to make it 2-1. Nola giving up home runs. I mean, that's par for the course this year. Uh, but then Bryce Harper in the top of the third tied it up with a solo home run to center field. 412 feet, and man, he he got that one. Uh, makes it 2-2. Two to two. And then Kevin Biggio hits a two RBI single in the third inning and the Phillies give the lead right back up and make it four to two. I guess the tie, it turns into a lead for Toronto. But then the fifth inning is where it got interesting. Nick Castellanos hit a big uh, RBI double to left field scoring uh, Kyle Schwarber. And then with two outs, Bryson Stott hits a ground ball to third base that uh, it's a low throw and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. can't dig it out at first. Two more runs score. That's five, four Phillies and they would not give up the lead the rest of the way. Uh, Harper scored there. So Harper now has two runs scored in the game by the fifth inning. And in the sixth inning, uh, Kyle Schwarber hit a sacrifice fly to right, scoring JT Romito. Alec Bohm hit an RBI single, scoring Jake Cave. It's seven to four. Uh, Jake Cave homered to center field, eight to four. I mean, Cave had a nice day. Uh, good work by him at the dish. And then Bryce Harper in the top of the ninth goes ahead and, and takes Francis from Toronto deep to right center, 404 feet. Not as long as the first one, but multi home run game, his first of the year. It was just a great offensive performance by the Philadelphia Phillies. Before we get into the Harper thing, just real quick, I want to give you the final line for Aaron Nola because I know people are caught up on him. He did end up getting the win in the game. He's 10-8 and eight on the year. Uh, went five innings pitch, so he's not going as deep into games as he has earlier on in the season. Just four hits, four runs, four earned, four walks, not good. Seven strikeouts, so he had the strikeout stuff working, and he had that going from Jump Street. But, man, the home run just still kills him. He gave up another home run. He, he just can't. I don't know. He can't have multiple shutdown starts in a row. I don't get it. But it wasn't a really inspiring performance by Aaron Nola, but it wasn't a pull your hair out over it performance by Aaron Nola either. It was just kind of those one of those middle of the road starts. The issue is he's not supposed to be a middle of the road pitcher. He's supposed to be a top of the rotation pitcher. So even the middle of the road starts are disheartening when it comes to 
uh, playoffs and him potentially being near the top of a playoff rotation. We're going to talk about that in the final segment of today's episode about what the uh, wild card series rotation should be. But Nola got the job done. He just didn't exactly do it in an inspiring way. So uh, I don't know. N- net neutral for Aaron Nola yesterday on the start, which is better than it could have been, uh, but not as good as you want to see to, again, I'll keep saying it, inspire confidence. That's what Aaron Nola needs to do because he's inspired so much doubt in the fan base with his performance so far this year. But let's talk about Bryce Harper, man. What a day at the dish for Bryce. He was three for four with two home runs, two RBIs. Uh, he also had a walk in there in five uh, plate appearances, uh, only four at bats registered because of the walk, of course. But I mean, three hits, three runs, four at bats, two homers. Uh, it's just such a good day for Bryce Harper. That was the vintage, like Bryce Harper is going to show up and just show out against your team type of performance. And you love to see that from him because the power really hasn't been there a lot this year. Uh, he's up to nine home runs on the year, I believe. And two of them came yesterday maybe he's about to hit a stretch where he hits them in bunches and the Phillies could really, really use that for sure. I mean, they could use all the offense they could get, but nine runs against the Toronto Blue Jays and Kevin Gosman, who's a really good pitcher. Uh, that's a great offensive effort by the Philadelphia Phillies. And there are a lot of guys that you could give props to in this one. Uh, I mean, Nick Castellanos was two for five. He had a big RBI double. Uh, Bryson Stott a hit. Uh, Trey Turner, another hit. Uh, Jay Chiramito, one for four with a run scored. Jake Cave, two for three. Big day for Jake Cave, too. He was kind of overshadowed by the fact that two of Bryce Harper's hits went out of the yard. But Cave showed a little bit there. He's not really a high batting average guy, but uh, 235, uh, it's not awful. You can kind of get away with it for the time being. He's showing you that if you need in a bat in the clutch in the postseason, he's not like an automatic out, right? there are guys on some playoff teams that when they get to the plate, it's like, well, this guy ain't coming through. And I'm not saying that J.K. Cave inspires confidence. That's, I guess, the phrase of the episode is inspiring confidence. I'm just saying that the more I watch him go through plate appearances, the more I say, okay, it's clear why this guy's been a major leaguer for a couple of years now. He's not a minor league player. Uh, he's not a major league starter. He's just uh, one of those major league depth pieces that maybe could be a part of a championship roster. Who knows? But it's nice to see him doing a little bit of something and having a nice night there. The biggest thing is Harper, though. If Harper can get on one of these tears where over the last, like, month or so of the season, we got, like, a month and a half left now. Uh, If he can get through this last month and a half and, I don't know, hit six, seven more home runs, uh, you feel really good about where he's at going into October. Because you remember how hot he was in October last year. He's got the ability to turn it on. But – you really need to – well, you don't need to because he was cold at the end of the season last year and then October rolls around and it's just like, oh, my God, this guy's the best hitter on the planet right now. He can flip a switch because he rises to the occasion, but I'd much rather see a gradual buildup of like, okay, power here, power here, oh, consistent power. We're heading into October. We feel great. He's seeing the ball well. That's the type of growth I'd like to see from Bryce Harper and those power numbers. I mean, the average numbers have been good all year. He's batting 291. That's darn good especially considering he's coming off of an elbow injury and jumped in midseason and didn't have spring training or anything like that. feel great about where Bryce Harper's at. And it was really awesome to see him have his first multi-home run game of the year for the Philadelphia Phillies last night. The Phillies needed that to kind of start the scoring and then also to finish off the night. And that extra insurance run puts you in a different situation with the bullpen. When you do that in the top of the ninth, now you can go uh, – where the Phillies did in the ninth instead of having to use one of your top guys. And I know Gregory Soto is supposed to be one of your top guys, but he'd already used Kimbrell in the eighth. Soto hadn't gotten work in a minute, so you you put him in a situation where uh, he can get some low-impact innings that might not be as stressful and maybe work out of some stuff. And he had a, a clean inning with no hits allowed and a strikeout in the bottom of the ninth. I mean, it, it was just great. And Harper's going to be the story of the game, as he always is when he does something Bryce Harper-esque. Now what we need to see is it's not a burst and then quiet. And that's not just Harper. That's the whole offense. Consistent, good offense from the Philadelphia Phillies is going to be important going forward. And that little mini slump that they were on uh, between the Minnesota series and the Toronto series, well, that appears to be over. Now, they got another opportunity coming up, too. And we're going to preview more of this series on tomorrow's episode. But they now head to Washington to play three games against the Nationals. Well, two games in Washington, one in Williamsport in the Little League Classic which will be a cool event this Sunday at 7 p.m. It'll be Sunday night baseball. But first pitch of first game is tomorrow night, off night today, Thursday, 
uh, tomorrow night, Friday night, 7.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can listen to every pitch of the Phillies' hometown radio broadcast of that game on the SiriusXM app. Just go to the SXM app and search Phillies, and you'll be able to pull up everything there to check out that game. Now, coming up next, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Philadelphia Phillies' playoff chances, some new power rankings just came out from ESPN, all this good stuff. Just a general look around the league on an off day. Uh, take stock in where everybody else is at, who's hot, who's not who the Phillies are chasing, who's chasing the Phillies down, all this good stuff. We'll get into where they stand in the universe of Major League Baseball coming up as we continue Locked on Phillies. First of all, I want to tell you about one of our newest sponsors, okay? Listen, look at my head right now. You see how short my hair is? I don't love having short hair. I did it for a great reason. Of course, shout out to uh, my friend John Kikade, who's currently going through chemo, battling cancer. Thoughts and prayers are always with him. And if you're in the Philadelphia area and you listen to sports talk at all, I'm sure you're familiar with John's current battle with cancer. We're all wishing him the best. And that's why my hair is the way it is. But you don't have to choose between hair growth and health. Like, you don't have to. Nutrafol, one of our newest sponsors, uh, provides a whole body health approach for men that promotes healthier hair. No drugs, no compromises. It's just better hair. I mean, men think losing their hair is inevitable. And I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, looking at my head... I get it. I get how it bothers people. I don't love having short hair. I like to have long flowing locks. And for some people, that's just it it happens. But Nutrafol's uh, science backed hair growth supplement for men can help you take control of your hair's future. Did you know that 80 percent of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime? It's normal, but it doesn't have to be your fate. You can get ahead of thinning with Nutrafol and you might be tired of like weakening or thinning hair. I mean, even looking at the front of mine, I had someone tell me the other day, joking that my hair was kind of looking thin, then I get it. It's a shaved head. Uh, My hair's going to be fine, I hope. But if I run into any trouble, I'm calling my friends over in Nutrafol because it's going to help you reach your hair's full potential. It's the leading hair growth supplement. Nutrafol helps improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. So go ahead and uh, check everything out with Nutrafol and take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com, uh, and that's uh, slash men, and then you'll enter the promo code LOCKED on MLB. You're going to want to find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, and that's spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L. Again, N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com slash men, and enter promo code LOCKED on MLB. All right, let's get into the uh, the Phillies kind of uh, playoff look here. One more time, I do want to let you know 7.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Friday night is going to be the time for first pitch for the Philadelphia Phillies versus the Washington Nationals, a three-game series, a series that we'll preview in tomorrow's episode. You can listen to every pitch of the Phillies' hometown radio broadcast of that game on the SiriusXM app. Just go to the SXM app and search Phillies. And you'll be able to pull up everything you need to hear from the home radio broadcast of that game. Great way to uh, listen to a game there. So give our partners over at Sirius some love. Now, the Phillies, as far as the divisional race is concerned, there's just no way they're catching Atlanta. They're 12 and a half games back now. The Braves are unbelievable. They have a 650 winning percentage. They're the best team in baseball. I mean, they're smoking everybody else. The Baltimore Orioles are the best team in the American League, and they have a winning percentage of 612. Uh, the Braves are just too good, man. You're not catching them. They have a 208 run differential to their favor. Just for an example, the Phillies have a plus 37, and they're the top wild card seed right now. But, uh, yes, the wild card is what you're looking for, and the Phillies are currently three and a half games up on the teams tied for the final wild card spot. So the San Francisco Giants are in the second wild card spot. So if the season ended today, it would be Gabe Kapler and the San Francisco Giants coming to Philadelphia to face the Phillies. The Phillies are a game, or sorry, two games up on the San Francisco Giants right now. And you have a series coming up with San Francisco a little bit later on. So you'll have a chance to really take care of business there. And the Giants have a tough schedule to round everything out. Then there's three teams right now tied as far as um, the final wild card spots concerned the Cubs, the Marlins, the Reds, all in the dead heat for that final wild card spot. I think that the Cubs are a playoff team. I think that the Giants are a playoff team, 
And I think that the Marlins are good enough to be a playoff team. Like, I think those are the three teams. I still don't buy the Reds. Sorry if you're a Reds fan and somehow found this. Maybe you got the colors mixed up and saw this red shirt and didn't notice the Phillies logos and the victory shirt and thought maybe it's a Reds podcast. And, well, if you accidentally stumbled in here, I don't think you're a playoff team. Sorry about that. I think you got some good pieces. But the teams I'm really watching are the Giants, the Cubs, and the Marlins. The Diamondbacks, only a game and a half out of that final spot. So they can make a push, too. And they were really good at the start of the season. They were leading the uh, NL West for a while there. I mean, they're still, they were a young team, so you kind of got the feeling that they were going to drop off, and they did. I've been talking about that. I didn't see the staying power of them. Said the same thing about the Marlins, who are now in the final wild card spot. Uh, I don't know. If I had to guess, the team on the outside looking in is going to be the Miami Marlins. But those are the teams you're trying to, uh, to go ahead and beat. Rounding out the National League, the Padres are four and a half out. The Mets are seven and a half out of the final wild card spot. I mean, all these teams are dead. Pirates, Cardinals, Nationals, all eight and a half back. Colorado Rockies way down there at 16 and a half back. So just uh, those teams all have no chance. I'd say it's uh, Padres have an outside chance. The Diamondbacks kind of on the fringe. They're a bubble team. And then the Reds, Marlins, Cubs, and Giants are the ones rounding out the final wild card spots there, two and three. Because I do really think the Phillies are going to lock down that top wild card spot. Now, looking at those teams that are currently in playoff position or tied for playoff position, as far as their last 10 games, the Phillies are looking as good as any of them. The Phillies are six and four in their last 10 games. The Giants, three and seven. They're bombing fast. The Cubs are six and four too. They've been really good, uh, but the Marlins are 500, five and five in their last 10. The uh, Reds are four and six in their last 10. I mean, if the Phillies just consistently play over 500 baseball, they're going to continue to build their lead on these teams in the wild card race because, frankly, the National League isn't that good. And these teams playing for the wild card spot are not up to the quality of the Philadelphia Phillies. It, it's just a great opportunity for the Phillies with an easier schedule down the stretch to uh, get some divisional opponents in the Nationals and the Mets who uh, aren't really hanging around all that much. It's a really good opportunity for the Phillies to put this to bed and set up their playoff rotation the way they want it to be. Now, I also want to take a look at the playoff odds, just to give you an idea, because the game's back and everything makes it sound close. The playoff odds and predictors and everything from our fans, uh, our fans, our friends over at Fangraphs, hopefully they're fans as well, uh, tells you a little bit about what you're looking for when it comes to the uh, the odds of the actual team and not just how many games back or anything they are. So in the odds to make the playoffs, running down, the Braves have a 100% chance to make the playoffs, as do the Dodgers. Both of those teams are locked in. The Orioles, 98.1% of a chance. I call that a lock. The Rays, 96.6%. The Rangers, 94.1%. The Astros, 92.3%. The Twins, 90.8% because of that weakened AL Central. And then you have the Philadelphia Phillies at 86% chance to make the playoffs. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth best in baseball, which is, uh, I mean, it's not great, but it's fine. I think that'll improve over the course of the regular season as they continue to uh, knock down some easier competition the rest of the way. Uh, so eighth best and make the playoff odds, but in World Series odds, the Braves have a 26.1% chance to win the World Series, easily favorites in baseball, understood. Dodgers 15.9%, Astros 11.2%, Rays 9.3%, Rangers 6.4%. The Phillies are down there at 4.4% with the sixth best odds to win the World Series currently. Now, is that because of the pitching staff, the offense, the quality of the roster, the experience from last year? I don't know. I don't know exactly what goes into that percentage and why it's where it is, but I know that's a good sign from the folks at Fangraphs who are putting this through an algorithm and trying to figure out who's got the best chances. So, uh, yeah, the Phillies are in a really good spot right now, especially considering how they started the season. So I'm, I'm happy with where they're at when you take a look around the league. Now, I want to remind you one more time, Phillies will play the Nationals, another lowly opponent you got a chance to stack wins against. First game is tomorrow at 7.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can listen to every pitch of the Phillies' hometown radio broadcast of that game on the SiriusXM app. Just go to the SXM app and search Phillies, and you'll be able to pull up everything you need to see there. So, uh, yeah, there you have it. And when they get into the playoffs, well, there's an interesting conversation to be had about the wild card series rotation. And we'll have that conversation coming up as we wrap up Locked On Phillies. Oh, but first, let me tell you about my friends over at Sleeper. 
Do you think that uh, Friday night when the Phillies play the Nationals, Bryce Harper is going to follow up his two home run performance with another home run against the Nationals? Well, I sure do. I think he's going to hit a home run in that series, and I think he's going to hit them in bunches. I think he's going to get hot. Really, I do. And uh, you can jump on sleeper and swing for the fences with up to 100 times payouts on wagers just like that. I mean, all you have to do is choose two or more players that you like and select more or less on their stat categories. It could be home runs like I was just talking about. It could be strikeouts, hits, all that good stuff. There's plenty more you can get into. You get your picks right, and you could win big. Plus, dynamic payouts are live with Sleeper. So what are dynamic payouts? Well, in short, each player now has uh, player projections that have a multiplier attached to them. So if it's a player who hasn't hit a home run in a while, maybe that multiplier is higher. It's not just like preset multipliers. Like you pick six players, you make this percentage of your money if you win. No, it's like if you pick six players, but they're all really kind of out of left field bets. There's a little baseball pun for you. You get the opportunity to make even more money. It's a great way to use Sleeper. Such a simple app. It's very quick. You just pick your players and the props you want to uh, go ahead and put down, pick over under. And next thing you know, you could be winning up to 100 times your money. That's a darn good deal if you do ask me. Plus, deal gets even better, right? Use promo code locked on and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions do apply. See Sleeper's terms are used for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Go ahead and check out our friends over at Sleeper today. All right, the wild card series rotation. First off, let me preface this by saying it is what's today, August 17th? Yes, August 17th, right? We got a ways to go. Another month and a half, basically, of baseball still to play. So a lot can change between now and then. But where it stands currently today, here's how I see the Phillies. And this is me. Not what they will do, what I think they should do. Here's what I think the Phillies rotation should be. So I think Zach Wheeler, uh, barring a really rough month of September, should be your number one starter in the postseason. He's a proven veteran. He's a guy that's pitched deep into the postseason before. He's a guy that has a bunch of experience at the major league level. Like he's just a vet with really good stuff that any day could go out and shut down an opposing team. An innings eater, great stuff. I mean, there's so many good things to be said about Zach Wheeler. He's had some rough spots this year, but I still trust him as number one just because you saw him do it last year despite coming off of like some shoulder issues and everything like that that had him resting for a month. So that's number one for me. Number two, if the season ended today, is Michael Lorenzen. I mean, all the guy's done since joining the Phillies, and he'll throw tomorrow night, is uh, all he's done is go eight innings of, I think it was two runs against the Nash- or the Nationals, the Marlins, and then he followed that up with, obviously, the no-hitter against the Nationals. And now they get to see him again. Wow, that's they could be in for a rough night tomorrow night. But Michael Lorenzen has done what he needed to do so far to cement himself as the second-best pitcher on this roster right now. And I'll tell you, the third spot is kind of interesting. I think it could be Aaron Nola, uh, just because the proven veteranness uh, of him. I, I don't know. He was really good in the postseason last year until like his last start or two. But early on in the postseason, he was good. Uh, he's been around forever. This team trusts him. I think it would be a bit of a boost to his ego if you said, okay, you get the ball in a wild card series. Because remember, three games, guy yeah, went two out of three. But pushing him to game three means you could take advantage and not even have to use him. But I'm not just giving it to Aaron Nola. I'm saying that for game three, you have everybody ready to go. Sanchez, Suarez, Walker, Nola. I'm not saying throw all of them in the same game, but I'm saying you have a bunch of good pitchers. I think this is going to be locked up, meaning the Phillies will be the top wild card seed uh, with probably a couple of days left in the season, if not a full week, because of how easy their schedule is compared to some of the guys, some of the teams rather chasing them down. So what you do is you get everyone ready and you kind of feel it out. Have they... Uh, have they seen righties and hit righties really well with Wheeler and uh, Lorenzo on the mound? Maybe. Then maybe you'll go ahead and say, okay, let's give it to a lefty. Uh, let's throw Christopher Sanchez out there. That would be a big spot for the kid, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, maybe you're looking at a thing where you say, okay, uh, you need someone who can eat up innings because our bullpen got kind of taxed in game one or two. Go ahead and throw Tywon Walker, big body guy who just eats innings. Maybe it's a high-pressure situation. It's been a couple close games, and you're like, well, Ranger Suarez is cold as ice. We'll have him ready to go. All of those guys should be ready for game three. And there's one other scenario. If Zach Wheeler wins game one, maybe, maybe you consider throwing Aaron Nola game two because it's house money, and you're like, okay, if we can do that, then you can have Lorenzen start game one in the NLDS against presumably the Atlanta Braves at this point. A lot of stuff to be worked around, but that's where my thought process is right now when it comes to – the uh, Philadelphia Phillies 
wild card series rotation. And then you got to reevaluate as the series go on and hopefully they advance. But that's where I stand right now. So we're starting to have playoff talk. We're getting closer. And it's time to start aiming everything up right there. That's all for today's episode of Locked on Phillies. Thank you so much for checking us out. Make sure, again, you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube, all that good stuff. Really appreciate it. Uh, and I will talk to you next time. After the off day tonight, we'll preview the series with the Nationals tomorrow on the next episode of Locked on Phillies.